So this is going to be one of my first story times. Back in 2016, um, so I, I've been feeding the homeless, like my team and I, we've been doing this for, uh, as of September 14th, it has been nine years that we've been doing it every week. But uh, yeah, so it was, it was back in 2016, and I went to go feed the homeless on uh, County Line Road, and I had um, my car with right next to me. I don't know if you're familiar with Jackson, but County Line Road area is like this little island thing. So I had my car propped up onto it right next to me. So I had a bunch of food and ice cold water. It was about 104 degrees uh, temperature outside, and um, and basically, a JPD officer came, which is Jackson Police Department officer, came to me, and um, basically he was very upset. And he, he first thing he said to me was, uh, he just pulled over by the island, didn't even get out of his car, and he said to me that I told you that um, to to not be here and to leave now. And I looked at him so confused, and I was like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, officer. I was like. We're a registered nonprofit, and I'm giving food to the homeless. So I, I really like food and water. So I, I said, I don't. This is the first time we talked to me. He just sped off and drove off, and I couldn't believe, never in a million years, that uh, by feeding the homeless, I was it was going to get me almost shot. So that was a horrible experience in that respect. And then there's even more to it uh, when you think about the possible ramifications of what could have happened. Um, but yeah, so the officer left, and then I just continued um, eating the homeless, giving them ice cold water, had a cooler, and it was just very, very bizarre. Uh, I mean, that day was going pretty smoothly, and then the officer came by a second time, and at that point, I was tired, sweaty, exhausted. Um, but yeah, uh, the officer came up. This time, he drove up onto the little island thing, and uh, normally, I almost never, ever take pictures uh, of what I do, or I really suck at social media. Like we've been eating almost every week for years now, and I, I have a handful of pictures and stuff. It's one of the things we just do the work. We don't really care about publicizing it so much, which is apparently a bad thing from what I've been told. Um, but yeah, uh, at that point, luckily I took some pictures because what was about to go down next became even more bizarre. So the officer then told me to, I said to you, to pack up your shit and go. And I, I looked at the officer. I said, uh, I think you're confused here because I am not asking for anything. I'm actually giving away food and water. And at that point, I said, there, there's probably some confusion here. So I said, if you call your commander or if you allow me to call the chief of uh, police, I said, they'll vouch for who I am and everything will be cleared up. So at that point, I, I asked the officer, I'm going, well, I tell the officer, I'm going to call the commander. So I reached for my cell phone, but this time I'm out in the open. My hands were clearly visible and um, uh, I had I actually had food in my hand. So I, he caught me when I was in the middle of giving something away. Uh, and at that point, he told me, if you reach for your cell phone, I will consider you a threat. And I told him, uh, I, I, I said, just, okay, Please, I'm not trying to be a threat. I said, I, I understand, you know, your job is difficult and stuff. So I said, please, you call your commander. And I told them I spelled out my name, who I am, and what uh, what nonprofit I was with. And I said, they know me because I, I usually, I would, at that time, I used to feed uh, in downtown Jackson by Smith Park every week. So I said, this is clearly a mix up. I said, please, just call your commander, call the chief of police. They will understand who I am, and, and you will see that I, I, I'm not a threat in any way, shape, or form. So at that point, he calls for backup, and I was so confused. And I had my hands on the hood of uh, the trunk of my car, sorry, and he asked me not to move. So I said, I'm not moving, man. I came to feed the, the homeless and not die. So at that point, my hands are on the, hood, uh, the trunk of my uh, car, and then backup comes speeding up. And then this officer comes out of the car, and he had... <laughs> My God, you should have seen it. it was like a shotgun. He had a bulletproof vest and everything. And the second officer was so confused. He was just like, I, I don't know what's happening. So he immediately runs up to the other officer, talks to him. Then he comes up and talks to me because all he sees is food because I had a, a foldable table out, which is stacks of chicken shawarma sandwiches from Aladdin, a bunch of other food there, and that canned food even. And I believe I also had um, ice cold waters in a cooler. 
So at that point, uh, um, the other officer starts uh, just he talks to the other officer. Then he goes and he starts rush, rummaging through the food. He sees his food. And he starts digging through the ice cold water. He sees there's nothing but water. So then the officer, the, the officer with the bulletproof vest, the second backup officer, comes up to me. He said, talk to me. He pulls me to the side. So he said, what are you doing here? I told him that I am uh, feeding the homeless. I said, I'm giving food and ice cold water. I said, it's 104 degrees out. I'm not here for fun. That this is you're just giving stuff to people that need it. So he, the officer, was so confused because he said, "I dug through the food." He said, "Is there any hidden weapons there or anything?" I said, "No." I said, "How what would I have hidden weapons for?" He said, "I'm here just to feed." So at that point, the officer with the bullet vest, the backup, went to the other officer that called him, and he said to his face, "He said there is no threat here." And then he got in his car, slammed this, uh, his his. Uh, uh, vehicle really the door of his vehicle really hard and it sped off at that point the uh, first officer that was doing all this drama uh, uh which was also by the way a black officer which kind of surprised me actually and he, he was just it was just crazy he said i'm going to give you a ticket and i said at that point i said give me whatever ticket you want i'll see you in court i'm not going to deal with it over here so um he wrote me a bunch of tickets and at, <laughs> he, he literally wrote me so many tickets. I don't even know what the hell they were for. Like one of them was in and out of traffic when I wasn't driving. I, I don't know. I've never, I didn't, his hand was so sloppy anyway. So at that point, um, he gave me the tickets and I go home. When I go home, I actually get called in the next day by the chief of police, uh, Lee Vance, when he was alive. And uh, he actually issued, he gave me a formal apology and he said, that they didn't know who I am. And basically, the, apparently, they thought I was a homeless person. At which point, I got really upset with uh, Chief Vance. I said, how would he think I'm homeless? I said, it was 2016. I had a brand new 2016 car right next to me. I had a brand new Mazda. And, and I said, it's not even like the car was parked around. Um, oops. It wasn't even like the car was parked around the corner. It was right there. It was right physically next to me. And, and thank goodness I took pictures. I showed him the pictures of the food and also like uh, the setup and everything with my car right next to me. And I said, I don't know how he would have confused I was homeless. So basically at that point, um, Chief Vance said that apparently the structure, they, they thought I was a homeless person uh, harassing some of the people at the corner because apparently they had some calls that day when there were some of the homeless banging on people's windows and some someone threatened a woman in the car so either way i said i don't understand how that confusion could have happened because i said that wasn't the case not at all i said i clearly said to him that call your commander so we can get this cleared up anyway um at that point he gave me an apology i, I was invited down to the pre the, the precincts for that area and then they gave me an apology saying that you know this should never have happened and, and at that point, I was deeply concerned because I said, what if I was homeless? That's still not how you treat people. That is not cool in any way, shape, or form. And they told me they're going to do better, and it was a big uh, uh, problem. So basically, at that point, all the tickets and stuff, I was told not to worry about it, um, which luckily I did worry about it still, but I was told not to worry about it. Um, so anyway, I had a court date, so they told me not to worry about any of that, but I still showed up to my court date. Oh, my God. Thank God I showed up to that court date. And I'll tell you why. Because when I showed up, I waited for hours. And when I finally got hurt, the judge was standing, like sitting there. And he looked at me. And he said, do you know why you're here, young man? I said, I literally have no idea why I'm here. And then the judge just kind of chuckled a little. And he said, son, it does not work to your benefit to be a smart aleck with me. And I told him, I said, seriously, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. So then at that point, I showed the, uh, the judge the photos, and I said, I don't know why I'm here. I was feeding the homeless, and, and when I was feeding the homeless, that's when the officer came, and then they even threatened me and all that stuff. I said, the officer obviously didn't show up that day to court. I said, if the officer would have showed up, then this would have been a totally different conversation. And then at that point, the judge was like, wait, what? He said, the tickets I'm seeing here is that you did reckless driving, you were speeding. I said, no, I wasn't. And Thank God, again, I had photos of the car parked right there. When the judge saw the car parked, he's like, uh, yeah, clearly you were not doing reckless. And this was a major problem because I didn't even know, I didn't even know that the, the, the officer did that. I mean, that was freaking lying. Anyway, so at that point, 
uh, uh, the judge asked me to explain to him what happened, so I did. And then basically the judge was like, this is this is very bad. He said, I am so sorry this happened to you. He said, please keep up the good work you're doing in the community. And and thanks actually to that judge, I discovered that you're actually supposed to have a charity permit. So even though we were a registered nonprofit, I didn't know that we were supposed to have a charity permit that you have to pay for every year to have the legal right to feed the homeless. Anyway, uh, but yeah, that, that was just mind blowing to me because what scares the hell out of me is that let's say I did follow uh, what was told to me by some of the commanders and the, the chief of police at the time where I just didn't pay attention. Could it be possible that I would all of a sudden have a, a warrant for my arrest because I didn't show up to court? And, and then all of a sudden, let's say I get pulled over somewhere unsuspecting. I'm not even thinking about it. And then I, I'm get told by another officer that I have a warrant for my arrest because I didn't show up to court. And I'm like, what court? So we really need to make the legal system a lot easier to understand. And we need to start training it in school because I'm telling you, I have two master's degrees and I didn't know that. And by the time I didn't have that, but I mean, it's just absolutely mind boggling to me that this is not laid out. This should be part of our basic education. If it's open to everyone, this is how our system is supposed to work. We should be understanding it from our basic schooling, but no. So basically I mean, I'm telling you that I could have gotten pulled over for something minor, like a brake light not working, completely unaware of the fact that I could possibly have a warrant because I didn't show up in court. And I still don't fully understand how that system works because it's amazing. Um, anyway, so that was basically my little story about uh, Are You Hungry? I have a bajillion stories that I'm going to start sharing with you guys. But yeah, I remember a lot of people, people were ready to protest. They were ready to stand over there. They were uh, ready to fight like crazy because they said, I can't believe the police were ready to do that to you. And then uh, it was like this, they were almost coming with the slogan like, uh, feed the homeless, don't get shot, something like that. And I asked people to calm down. I said, this probably was a misunderstanding, but I said, even so, by rallying, yes, you can get yourself heard, but not necessarily all the time does it lead to productive change. I said, we need to have more of a, a, an understanding for each other. So why that possibly happened also? Um, well, I'm glad I'm still alive to tell you the story, though. And yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>